There's a lot of people, honey, that didn't wake up this morning. Amen. We're not in no rest home. We're not in a hospital. We're not in a jail cell. We got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. I'm not, I ain't got no big nerve in my back. <laughs> Brother Billy, you have something to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. <coughs> we got a lot to be thankful for, church. Amen. If you got your Bible, I'm not going to keep you very long, I promise. It's going to be short and sweet. Amen. I may give me five minutes. And it's 5, 10, 15, 20. I got about an hour I can preach to you. Amen. Turn with me to John, the 15th chapter. This is Brother Mike's night. You know, he don't let you out here early. Amen. But I promise you, I'm going to. The 15th chapter of John. Says, I am a true vine, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every breath, every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. A lot of times we think about our trials we go through, or our battles. <coughs> All these churches, he's purging us. He's getting us for he's getting us where we can bring forth more fruit. <coughs> Amen. We ain't bringing the fruit that we need to be bringing forth. Sometimes he's got to get me in a place, Sister Richie, where I'll spend more time on my knees. Sometimes he's got to get me in a place where I'll spend more time in his word. Amen. He's purging me. He's, he, see, church, he's not, he's not punishing us. He's trying to get us ready. Amen. He's trying to get on bill ready that I can make the kingdom of heaven my home. He's trying to get me ready that I can bring forth more fruit. Amen. You know, a lot of people, they, they look on that, they talk about his judges by... Your first you bear, and, and a lot of people that go into that you clothes. And that's the way you dress. That's not the fruit he's talking about. He's talking about the fruit you'll find over his glacier. He's, he's talking about the love, the joy, the fruit of the Spirit is what he's talking about. And, and, he's, and he's trying to get us where we can bring forth more of that fruit. Amen. A lot of people say, well, you, you judge me from the outside, but God judge me on the inside. God, they, they say, God, God won't judge me. Honey, if you get that inside right, if you ever get it right, amen. If he ever gets it proved, if he ever gets it proved for it, it come forth and bring forth the fruit that it's supposed to bring forth, the outside's going to take care of itself, amen. It, it'll change. There's got to be a change made, amen. If there ain't never been no change, honey, I'm afraid you didn't get it. There's got to be a change made in your life, amen. He said, every branch in me that bring, bears not fruit. He taketh away. And every branch that bear fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. You can take a road. I got a road bush that grows up by my porch. And that thing, they ain't never had very many roses on A couple of years ago, Sister Reese, I got out there and I cut that sucker. I said, well, if they ain't going to bring no roses, I'm going to cut it down. And I cut it almost to the ground. And it come back and it brought roses and roses and roses. And roses, because they got rid of some of that dead weight in there. Church, there's a lot of dead stuff inside of us that we need to get rid of. There's stuff in there that we need to deal with, and, and that's what he does. He it, it purges it. Amen. And it hurts. Sometimes it hurts, Sister Bonnie. Sometimes we don't. Our old, it hurts our flesh, because our old flesh don't want to give up anything. Amen. It, 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 your flesh ain't never going to grieve your spirit. Amen. Anytime he's trying to get you to grow in the spirit, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt your flesh. But if you'll just hang on, and if you'll just obey God, and do what He tells us to do, honey, it'll bring forth more fruit than it's ever brought before. There's going to be a change in your life. If you really abide in that vine, if we really abide in Him, amen, we'll see things happen that we ain't never seen before. But we've got to abide in Him. So we can't do it on our own, Sister Richard. I can't do it on my own. i got to have Him, amen. There is no good fruit in me. The only good fruit for me is the fruit that comes from him. It's the fruit of the Spirit that we're talking about. That joy, that love, that long suffering, <coughs> and that meekness and peace. And that's where it all comes from. It comes from him. It don't come from us. Without him, we are nothing. It says, now you are clean, clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. 
as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abided in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. There's a lot of preachers out there trying to do it on their own. I figured out a long time ago, I can't do it without him. Amen. I can I can do it without the crowd to the reason. I can do it without the, the, the finance and money coming in, but I cannot do it without him. I cannot preach without the Spirit of God. Amen. I gotta have that anointing. Amen. I gotta have I gotta have that answer from him. He he's the one that's gotta give me my message. Amen. I can't go on the internet and get me a message and preach it. Amen. Because it won't do you a bit of good. But if I do if I abide in him. And get it from him, Sister Bonnie. Amen. Because see, he knows what you have need of. Amen. He knows what I have need of before I ever ask. What the Bible says. He knows what we have need of. And he's the one who can supply our need. I don't know what you need. Amen. I, I ain't got no idea. And even if I did, I'd mess it all up. But if we stay hooked up in him, amen. Because we can do nothing about him. But through him, all things are possible. Through Jesus, all things are possible. As long as we stay connected to the body. Amen. As long as we don't get out and, and get on our own. So many preachers I've seen come up in the ministry. And they started out and they had a great ministry. They were doing it for God. But all of a sudden, they got unconnected from the body. They got connected to the money. They got connected to the things of the world. They got connected to entertainment. And they got connected to they're going to pray they're going to lose their crowd. If they preach against sin, if they preach something hard, they're afraid they're going to lose somebody. Amen. <clears throat> and they got disconnected from what God really wanted to do. Amen. Sometimes, Sister Rich, as a minister, you're going to have to preach it hard. Sometimes you're going to have to step on some toes. Amen. Sometimes I got to step on my own toe. Sometimes somebody's got to let them know that they can't live in sin and make it to heaven. If you love them, you'll tell them the truth. I got an email the other night, Sunday night, a text. Want to be the second person that's free and their name is at church. <coughs> Told me where they was at church at and, and want to be accepted friendship and I accepted friendship. And after I accepted that friendship, I kept watching it. And all during that church service, he was on Facebook. The whole service. I know without a shadow of doubt, ain't no way she could have gotten up from God. I mean, I see it every, all the time in churches. I've seen them sit on the back row and play their game board. I've seen them sit, sit and eat their popcorn. I've seen them sit and eat their chips. I've seen them bring their cokes into church. Honey, somebody's going to have to preach against it. I've seen their kids get up and run around on the platform while the man of God is trying to preach. And there ain't no way anybody's getting anything because they're watching them kids. Somebody's got to tell them. It may make them mad. But honey, it's just going to have to make them mad. Now, honey, if they get up and, if these kids get up and run around on, up here in front when I'm trying to preach God, God's word, honey, I'm going to make somebody mad. Because I'm not going to have it. Because it quenches the Spirit of God. Amen. And this ain't no place. I can remember Sister Bonnie back when we, when we was younger. A few years back. Down the brother hitting the church. Honey, if you got up and done something like that, somebody would get a hold of you. Somebody would grab you and then set you down somewhere. And it didn't have to be your parent. I can remember Brother Hinton one time taking up an offer. He said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to give you all your watches. In this offering plate. Pass that offering plate around. Everybody put their watch in it. He said, you can pick them up at your church. And that was just watches. Because people was looking at their watch during church. He would have a time for his cell phones. Honey, he would have a time with, with things that's going on in churches today. Honey, you wouldn't do it in his house. Amen. Why? Because he was a man of God. Why? Because he was a man. He was took to the vine. Amen. He was. He never did get separated from the vine. Amen. He was took to the vine, and he was preaching God's word, and he wasn't going to allow it in his heart. Amen. Would not allow. It. And I guarantee you, the problem thing goes on right now in his church. It wasn't went on when he was there. I know there's things going on in some of these other churches that wasn't went on. When he was here, 
Amen. Because he was preached on yesterday. Amen. And that's what that's what it's going to take, church. People's going to have to get some boldness behind them. And he didn't, and, and brother, he didn't, he didn't do it because he didn't like you. He done it because he feared God and he loved you. He done it because he feared God and he loved you. Amen. He had respect. People don't have respect for the house of God. Amen. They lost their respect. Amen. I remember times in Houston when somebody walked by the church house doors. They take their cap off. That's been several years back. But they wouldn't even wear a cap in front of the church. Amen. But they ain't none of that no more. Don't wear them in your church. Amen. They'll do all kinds of things that you never would have thought would happen in God's house. Amen. It's happening today. Because people ain't abiding in the mind. Because they lost their connection of where they need to be. Somebody's got to purge them. Somebody's got to let them know that they're wrong. Amen. Six verse said, if, if a man abide in me, he has cast forth his branches, and he a withered. If a man abide not in me, excuse me, he has cast forth his branches, and he withered. <clears throat> And man gathered him, gathered them and cast them into the fire. And they are burned. If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear, bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. To bear much fruit. We gotta bear more fruit. We gotta bring forth more fruit. It's gonna take some purging. It's gonna take some cleaning up. Amen. It's gonna take maybe making somebody mad. Amen. It's gonna take some spending some time with Jesus. It's gonna take staying hooked to that vine. Don't let nothing separate you from the vine. Amen. Once you get separated from the vine, you'll wither away. You may go for a while and you may you may fill your church up with entertainment. And your church may go for a while. You may have all kinds of people. But it will not last. Sooner or later, judgment is going to fall. Amen. Turn with me to 1 Peter. <coughs> the 4th chapter, the 12th verse. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning these fire trials which are to try you, as though some strange things happen unto you. See, it's not no strange thing. These trials ain't to, ain't to kill you. It's to try you. To help you. Amen. But rejoice. In as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be gl glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on, on this behalf for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God and if it first begin at, at us what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God it's got to begin at the house of God church has got to get ready we ain't never going to get the world ready until the church gets ready if the world comes in and all they see is us sitting around eating popcorn, texting on our phone while the man of God's trying to preach, what are they going to get? All they're going to see is what's going on out in the world. Amen. They can go over to the movies here and see the same thing. Judgment must begin at the house of God. We've got to learn to reverence the house of God. We've got to learn to reverence your pastor, the man of God, when he gets behind the pulpit, we got to learn to reverence him. 
Church, this church is blessed. And I'm not just saying this because Brother Billy is my brother-in-law. He is probably, uh, he's a problem too, he is one of the best preachers I ever heard in my life. And that's the truth. And I've heard a lot of good preachers over the years. But he, it's an anointing that he's got on his life. Amen. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I have not heard a better preacher than Billy Davis. He's good. Because he's got that anointing. Because he bites in that vine. So you, you, can, you can preach it, but can you live it? That's the difference. That's where the anointing comes from. If you live it, if you, if you stay hooked to the vine, and you get close to God. Amen. And it's the same way with the ones that are sitting out in the pews. It ain't just a pastor. The closer we live it, the more light we're going to shine. The closer we're long as we stay hooked to the vine. And there's going to be times that we're going to get purged, Sister Richard. There's times that we, uh, things are going to happen in our life, but it's going to be all right. Let it happen because sooner or later, you're going to bring forth more fruit because of what happened. Think it not strange concerning these far trials of tragedy. But it's going to bring forth, to, it's going to work to our good. <coughs> all things work together for the good to them who love God and the call according to a person. All things, even the bad things, even when we think it's the most awful thing in the world, it will work out to our good if we just hold on and keep hooked up to the vine. But we can't separate ourselves from the vine because without him we can do, just like the word said, without him we can do nothing. There's nothing that we can do without him. But with him, all things are possible. Amen. That's what the Lord gave me tonight. And I know that's short. But if we'll get a hold of it, Sister Rich, if we'll get that down in our spirit and, and, and we'll try to get closer and try to get a closer walk with Him and try to keep abiding in that vine, honey, it will do something for our life. I promise you it will. Give the Lord a hand for His word tonight. Amen. <laughs>